Fundación ANO, pero antes eh, me gustaría presentar a la doctora Flat Levy, que llegó ayer en la noche de Israel. La doctora Flat Levy, profesora en genética, directora de genética de Sharet Zedek, tiene muchas publicaciones en genética y pues es una eminencia en la genética, genética clínica. Ella nos va a estar ayudando en un proyecto de la investigación de la mutación de BRCA1, BRCA2 y el cáncer de mama cérico uterino. Este estudio solo será para las mujeres Ashkenazim, de papás y mamás eh, Ashkenazim, no es por excluir a nadie, es pura ciencia. Vamos a ver si sigue habiendo, un, eh, si sigue habiendo mutaciones del gen BRCA1 y BRCA2 aquí en México en mujeres Ashkenazim de segunda y tercera generación. Necesitamos 330 eh, pacientes. El costo va a ser mínimo, nomás es eh, de lo que cuesta el, el punzo y, y el frasco donde va la sangre. Eh, más adelante les vamos a hacer llegar información para la gente que está interesada. Eh, entonces doy la palabra a la doctora Frank Levy. About the background to the project and the project that I um, um, that I, I hope will happen, uh, thanks to Dr. Danny and uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Rina Gitter and uh, the people working with them. So I'm, a, as you've heard, I'm a geneticist at uh, Shari Tzedek, and um, the project we're talking about really stems from, I would say, my experience as a physician. So it's been known for many, many years that family history is a major risk factor for breast cancer. And if you have a relative who had breast cancer, if you're, you're more at risk of having it than a person who doesn't have family history. And that is because there are genetic factors that you're born with that can really increase your risk for breast cancer or ovarian cancer. So this has been known for a long time, but the actual genes in, which are mutated when you have high risk for breast or ovarian cancer were discovered about 20 years ago in 1994 in 1995, and these genes are called BRCA1 and BRCA2. It's just short for breast cancer 1 and breast cancer 2. Now, very shortly after these genes were discovered, it was also found out that there are mutations or genetic changes in these genes that are particularly common in the Ashkenazi Jewish population. There are three mutations, two in BRCA1 and one in BRCA2, and one in every 40 Ashkenazi Jews, men or women, are a carrier of one of these mutations. So if there are, I don't know, 120 people Ashkenazim sitting here, I would expect on average three of them to have one of these um, mutations. And what having this mutation means is that you're at much higher risk of getting breast cancer or ovarian cancer at a younger age. And so about 20 years ago, we started testing uh, women for these mutations. And in the beginning, and I see a lot of um, faces here also, it was like, you know, what good does it do, right? I mean, I, so I was born with this thing, it increases my risk. Why would I want to know about this? Is it just going to cause me to worry about myself, about my children? But the thing is, there is what to do about these mutations. And if you know you're at high risk, there are things you can do that will decrease your risk or at least uh, result in earlier diagnosis. And I know many of you maybe have heard of Angelina Jolie, the famous uh, um, actress. And uh, I have to tell you, she's not Jewish, <laughs> you didn't know that. Um, and, the, and she has a BRCA1 mutation that is not one of the Jewish mutations. She has, her family has their own mutation. And she had a strong family history of ovarian cancer, and she found out she was a carrier, and she had her breasts removed, and she also had her ovaries removed. So when people hear about these mutations, they immediately think about removing breasts. But the truth is, at least in Israel, that very few carriers choose to have this operation, but we know that removing the ovaries, which is obviously possible once you've had children, really reduces the risk both of obviously ovarian cancer, but also of breast cancer. So there is what to do, even if you don't undertake uh, large operations like um, removing the breasts. And so, again, people say, well, why are you doing this? And I'll tell you that time and again, what I saw in clinic was I would have women in their 40s coming with ovarian cancer, or women in their 30s coming with breast cancer, and we test them from the, for the mutations after they become affected, because if a woman is ill as a result of a mutation, it changes the therapy she receives. 
We know that the chemotherapy type is going to be different if it's a carrier because they respond to some types better than others. And there are now biological therapies, that is, drugs that specifically work against, um, against the cancer if it's caused by a specific mutation. So in terms of therapy, it's important for, to know if a woman had cancer because she was a mutation carrier. But in terms of prevention, if you think about it, it's a, t it's a terrible situation, right? If this woman had a mutation, we could have found out about it before she ever got cancer, and maybe we could have prevented that cancer. And so that really got me thinking about actually doing screening of the population, testing healthy women before they're affected to see if they have the mutation or not. And then they can undertake steps to lower their risk and to lower the risk of their daughters and their sisters and aunts and so forth. So in Israel, we've been doing this for a few years. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that we'll, this is the, in, in Israel, as you know, we have national health insurance and we have a committee that sits once a year and puts new technologies into what we call the health basket, that is the services that every Israeli citizen gets. And we hope to have genetic testing for these mutations uh, put into the health basket. One of the issues we have is a, is a political issue that uh, I think Jews are the, would be the best to understand, and that is when we proposed this, they said, well, this is a really unfair program. How come only Ashkenazim get to be tested for breast cancer? It's like, not Ashkenazim should have a right to have cancer, too. And uh, I'm, I'm being uh, facetious, of course. So the truth is that, genetically speaking, whereas in Ashkenazi Jews these mutations are very common, uh, in non-Ashkenazi Jews we don't have sufficient information, and we're actually doing a large study in, in, in Shari Tzedek now, trying to understand the genetics of breast and ovarian cancer in Jews who are um, of non-Ashkenazi uh, origin. But until then, I still hope that we can lower the risk in the Ashkenazi, um, in the Ashkenazi population. And uh, Dr. Rina Gittler, who is one of the most energetic people I've ever met, um, it really um, you know, came up to me a, a year ago when I was giving a talk in uh, Washington, D.C. at the American Association of Cancer Research. And she says, we have to start doing this in Mexico, in the Jewish community in Mexico. And I think she's absolutely right. And she's uh, gotten the program up and going, and there are excellent genetic labs here in, um, <coughs> here in Mexico City that can do the work. So I really urge all of you to participate. They want to reach, um, I think, 600 or 300 women. 300 women. And the aim is to show that we can identify these genetic risk factors, you can do something about it. And I think once you start there, it'll expand to the whole community and also ultimately to the non-Jewish community because this is uh, breast cancer and ovarian cancer are obviously universal problems.